Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Wow, love talking to Jackie Smith, uh, NFL Hall of Fame tight end, uh, longtime friend, seven, seven, did he say 17 years? He did. 17 years in the NFL and uh, signed for a $1,000 bonus he was making 50 cents an twelve thousand dollars a year yeah there you go and that's frank barton's voice you recognize that from the barton power sports in west memphis and jonesboro uh came in this morning on his vision uh victory motorcycle out there's pretty cool we've kept the curtains up so we can keep an eye on it out there on this saturday morning greg ratliff is our show producer uh next guest uh i really love to talk to this gentleman i was so glad when my good friend pat leonard's uh uh, told me about uh, this new thing that uh, the good folks at uh, the Cornell Lab Ornithology come up with. Oh, they, see, they seem to come up with great stuff out of Ithaca, New York. And uh, I should have guessed who put this together, but I just didn't think. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a series of fold-out guides from the lab. Makes it easy to identify ducks, geese, loons. And I'm not sure what a G-R-E-B-E-S is. And uh, do you know what that is, Frank? This I'm going to learn. Uh, we're going to learn. From I'm going to learn. The man who put the, uh, the the three the three guides together is our good friend, been on the show before, Dr. Kevin McGowan. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Larry. <laughs> All right, tell us what the the G E Grebes. Grebes. Those are Grebes. They're kind of like little bitty loons. Oh, if you okay. Saw them, you'd think they're a duck, but they don't have a duck bill, so they're they're not related to ducks. But they uh, they swim, they dive, catch little fish, things like that. And where are they located? Oh, you have a few around there. We do? I'm okay. Sure. They're, they're going to be... Uh, I'm going to be grebe watching right here now. I'm going to be looking out for grebes. <laughs> I think I saw one on the golf course the other day. So, uh, well, they, uh, they they hang out in pretty much the places ducks do. We, we get them more in the winter because they go up north to breed like like most of the ducks do, too. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a, a few. You have a, a few around now. Mostly the pied-billed grebe has a little white chicken-like bill with a black ring around it that's probably the most, uh, most wow common. well tell us about these uh, these uh, guides because they are really wonderful uh, the idea that you came up with and really like the the white the silhouettes too so uh, tell tell our listeners out there uh, about the three pamphlets i'm looking at here okay well they uh the, the they're fold out guides they're printed by waterford press and they do have uh illustrations that i put together that uh, i devised to try to help people recognize ducks mostly, but ducks and all the waterfowl uh, quickly and at a distance. And what I've realized, I've been, I've been watching birds for a long, you know, time, a long time, Kevin, a long time, Kevin. I'm going to talk time. about that and, too. Uh, You've banded over 2000. That's a long time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I realized that I was mostly when I'm scanning through a, a scope on a lake looking for ducks, I'm looking to see if I can find any white. You know, the main thing is you got to find something you can identify first. Uh-huh. And you just pick one out of a out of a flock, and uh, it's the white. Where's the white? And all the ducks have different patterns of white on their bodies, and that's the thing you can see from a long way off. Yeah. So uh-huh. I put together these silhouettes that uh, are not just black, but black and white. And, uh-huh. you know, you look at the... The pictures of the the dabbling ducks and man, you can tell a wood duck no problem. You don't have to see any of those pretty colors. He's got a very distinctive pattern of white, especially that yoke underneath the oh throat, yeah, uh-huh. a little yeah. bridle on the on the face, and and you don't need the colors. Right. I, actually, when I first put that one together and I looked at it, my mind filled in all the colors. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny. That's when I realized, yeah, this is this is good. This is a good thing. And so it, the the purpose of the guides are to uh, to get people to think that way, you know, look and and see something, see something big, look for the shape and the pattern of white. Those are the two most important things. And we're talking to Dr. Kevin McGowan. He's project manager for distance learning and bird biology at the Cornell Lab uh, uh, out of Ithaca, New York, and uh, on the new uh, waterfowl ID series. And uh, in this thing, you've got sea ducks and others. You've got the basics, which I really like. I'm all, I'm always good at basics, and then the dabbling and diving ducks, and uh, and I just you know was this an idea that just came to you, Kevin? I mean, you guys are not that you don't have enough to do as it is, but 
Well, I've been writing online courses for the last couple of years. That's sort of what I've been doing. We we have a number of educational things that we do at the Lab of Ornithology that we put out there for the general public. Mm -hmm. Some of it's free, all about birds, uh, Merlin, those are all free things. Uh, but we have a few that we charge for because it takes some instructor time. And I, I've been doing those. I've been creating those. And I, and I started doing webinars uh, about bird identity. Webinars. Yep. There you go. Yeah, that's... yeah, it's kind of fun. It's, yeah. uh, it's weird for me, <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, the guy who does it. But dear radio, you don't see the people's faces, so you understand what that is. I know what it means, yeah. Yeah, no. I, I have not done a lot of radio. I mostly talk to people person to person. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm looking for reactions from yeah. people not just staring at a box or right. looking at a microphone. But uh, So it's a little different, but it's live. It's a live event. And what we do is we, I, I talk and people can see me if they want to. They can turn off the little video and just watch the slides that I put up, slides and videos and stuff. But the fun bit is that I ask the audience questions uh -huh. and the audience can poll in. And then we see, you don't see anybody's single answer anybody's name but we can look and wow. say you know okay. which one of these is a red-breasted merganser uh -huh. and then we'll see that there's one we see history we see a, a plot of who how many people guess for which and that's fun because that allows us to say okay yeah most people got that but look there's a little bump down here on this photo and i can see why that is then i can address that and say yeah i can see why you'd be confused but if you look over here that's the thing that that'll tell you that it's not and so I can actually do interactive stuff with the, with the audience <laughs> it's right amazing. then. Yeah, it's amazing what the technology. Uh, I know that uh, you've been on this show before, and you know I'm going to get into crows in a minute here. But uh, <laughs> I was cautious. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's I got to because you get a lot of uh, reaction when we talk to you from uh, folks uh, when we talk crows. But I, I've got to ask you that uh, growing up in Ohio, I know you did that. I think you were around the Springfield area or somewhere yep. like that. Uh, is this your dream life? Is this what you wanted to do? I mean, uh, when you went to the Ohio State, you notice that you did not capitalize the in your uh, bio, you know, Kevin. I, I'm not. I'm not one of those rabbits. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure because there will be people that say he didn't capitalize the. You know. So, but uh, is this what you wanted to do? I mean, you've been doing this. I, uh, I looked it up, and you've been. Uh, uh, with uh, with the lab uh, there at, at Cornell since what the 1988? 1988, I came. Wow, to, to I mean, uh, yeah. so is this uh, is this the dream job? I mean, well, I'll tell you what. I'm sitting here in my office right now, looking out the window and watching birds uh, actually just get fed. Uh, I have stuff open on my desk to be working on birds, and they're paying me to do that. And so, um, <laughs> yes. yeah, I mean, yeah. This is, I, I didn't know I would be doing exactly what I'm doing, but basically I'm working with birds. I'm educating people about birds. So I'm getting to learn new things and tell other people about it, about birds. And, yeah, this is awesome. This is, uh, uh, as I say, I didn't know exactly how to do it, but I it's... was hopeful I could make a living and raise a family um, Working with working with animals and uh, well, especially love watching birds, and I've done it. And this Father's Day weekend is special for all of us, and I know for your family too. But uh, you are a traveler. You've been to Europe. You've been to South Central America, South America, Africa. I've looked at all these places. Then I keep coming back to the crow. You know, I, I you know I, I expect a, a movie about your life and crows. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, uh, it's a, a cartoon strip. I, I, well, well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But the crow. Let's let me. Let, let, because I know, and folks get we we you can get these uh, the guides through. Uh, I, I guess you could get them through the, the Cornell Lab, right? You can get uh, them through at uh, sapsuckerwoods.com. I wanted you um, to say you can that. Also I get love them from that. Amazon. Sap um, there should be. You tell your local uh, book dealer they should be carrying them too. Uh -huh. They're uh, they're out there to be for the general public, so they have a pretty wide distribution. Well, I just want you to say sapsucker, because I think that's the greatest word we've ever had on Outdoors of Larry Ray in 14 years. Frank yeah, wanted me to say it. Well, you know, down here, you know, you would refer to... That's not a good thing down yeah, here sometimes. You, you know, southern you, speeches... You would refer to him oh, something you, like, well, that's sapsucker <laughs> and, and fill in the blank. That's pretty common. Well, that's, Yeah, well, we've done... The names have been around for uh, <laughs> You can't do anything about years. the names, but uh, we love sap suckers down here. we got a lot of them listening right now, I think, probably. So, hey, crows. Uh, they're an amazing, here we go. Here we go. Crows. i got to find out because I'm, I'm amazed by these. I've read it. Ever since I first had Kevin on the show, I've, I'm, I've read a lot about crows. They are a remarkable bird, right, Kevin? You bet. 
They're awesome. They're, uh, I've, they teach me something every day. I've been studying crows for 27 years, and uh, I learn something new all the time. Well, what makes them remarkable? Uh, well, all kinds of stuff. I mean, they have an extremely complicated social life that's very much like ours. It's more like our social system than any other animal is like us. Uh, I mean, they stay the, they stay with their parents forever, right? I mean, <laughs> well, we have one guy who's he's nine years old this year, and he finally, I think, has made an effort to actually breed and leave his family. Wow! But he's we. We we worry about him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's, so. Uh, that's beyond the normal thing. For yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like uh, that's like staying with your parents till you're sixty or something. Okay, that's like a TV commercial I just saw recently. You know, so the, the yeah. oh, they're back again. You know, failure but, failure to launch. I think is the term. That but they but use. they are. Um, there's. Uh, didn't you say that they as far as uh, smart, they they when, when when everything ends, the coyote and the crow will still be here. Yeah. You know? Well, crows are pretty, they are pretty smart. You know, it's one of those things. It, there are a lot of things out there that are uh, superstition and all that. Owls, owls are not wise. They are dumb. Okay. Um, but crows are, in fact, smart. They're, they're real smart. And they've got uh, the crows that, uh, that live here at the lab know me because I, I give them peanuts from my car. And they know my car, and they know me, and they'll follow me out. And Oh, my goodness. And, and uh, I'm trying to teach them to find me parking space. In the parking <laughs> well. they, they follow my car in, and they know where I'm going, more or less, to the parking lots. And so they'll follow me. Sometimes I'll just go straight to the parking lot. But when, when I come in late, I circle into the close lots just to see if somebody is by chance left and there's a close parking space and they follow me and then they head out to the far lot because they know I'm going to the far lot. But once I found a, a, a spot closer and the, the, the crows were startled and flew over and landed near my car right there. So what I'm trying to get them to do is to understand that if there are, if there are uh, vacant spaces, that they should go sit in the trees above the vacant space and tell me where it is because that's where I'm going to go. Well, I'm sure it's you, you drive a black car and it says the crow man on the back. And I expect no, you to be a boy. Marvel hero. We're going to come right out. The Ant Man was next, and the Crow Man is next after that. So, well, they've uh, only found me one parking spot so far, and that that's, was kind of iffy. But uh, I'm I'm working on it. And you working on it, Kevin? Thank you for being on with us. Always a great pleasure. And again, folks, uh, you, you really need to get these uh, these guides. A great uh, Father's Day weekend if you had not uh, present. If you haven't done it today. Uh, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. It's a waterfowl ID series, the basics. It's, it's just, you just go right on through it. And uh, Dr. Kevin McGowan, thank you again. Happy Father's Day weekend to you, Kevin, and we will definitely stay in touch, okay? You betcha. Thanks very much. It's always fun to be here. Always fun. Thank you, Kevin. All right, let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Be right back. Uh, Frank Barton is in the house. Uh, Greg Ratliff is taking care of us on ESPN. Don't, don't miss it. You want to listen to this next segment, folks. Yeah, he's telling you that. Okay. Yeah, you want to listen? You want to stick around for this on Outdoors with Larry Ray. You can find